The importance of language. What's in a name? Hello, I'm Chloe. I'm a 36 year old autistic woman. I'm also a doctor in social psychology, an autistic consultant, a girlfriend, a sister, a daughter and an auntie. Compare this with, hello, I'm a person called Chloe. I'm a person who has lived for 36 years. I'm a person with femaleness and a person with high functioning autism. I'm a person who has done a PhD and a person with autism working as a consultant. Being the literal person that I am, not person with literalness, because, you know, I'm so funny. If people insist on referring to me as a person living with autism, you know, what I imagine then is, ah, how did autism get in here? I thought I locked the doors and shut all the windows, but it keeps getting in. Some will insist on calling autistic persons a person with autism or suffering from autism, living with autism. And it's important to consider why this is. Why is it acceptable, preferable, okay to describe myself, label myself as a woman, not a person with womanness, femaleness, you know, a white woman at that, not a person with whiteness, but people insist on person first language when it comes to my autistic experience. To be clear, the majority of autistic persons prefer identity first language, which is autistic person with a capital A on autistic, not person with autism. The same way that many of us don't even think twice about calling ourselves a woman or insert your gender here or a student, employee, mother, father, brother, third cousin, twice removed, white, black, Indian, Asian person. Many lament that I must be called a person with or living with autism because I am a person first, because I'm more than a label. And I agree, I am more than a label. And being autistic is more than a label, more than a diagnosis, more than a misunderstanding that I am disordered. It's a community, a social identity, a life, my life. I am autistic. It colours every aspect of my interaction with and experience of the world. I am autistic because I know that I am not disordered, that I have a neurodivergent, neurodevelopmental difference. A really good infographic by Neurodiversity Now reads things like, why would I want to be labelled, you asked, followed by a label that has words such as weirdo, odd, freak, warrior, strange, shy, slow, fussy. Then it says, well, which one would you prefer, followed by two labels, autistic and ADHD? Because quite simply, many of us who are autistic or neurodivergent in some way have already been labelled with really negative, hurtful, harmful, stigmatising and damaging words. I myself have been called cold, standoffish and unapproachable because people don't understand my autistic, neutral face. So when someone wants to use person-first language to remind themselves that I'm a person, they do so because they are under the misunderstanding that autistic experience is a pathology, a disorder, when this is not how many autistics, their allies and professionals and researchers understand autistic experience. And so what you mean when you insist on calling me a person with autism is that you already view my autistic experience as some curable, removable, disordered thing that is and should be separate from me. When actually autism is an abstract concept that's applied to human beings. Whereas autistic experience is very real and diverse and variable. And so when you want to consider me to have autism, this separable or possibly separable thing to me, that says more about your view of my experience than it is about personalising me. If you need to be reminded that I am a person, that I am human, that I am an autistic person and an autistic human, this is a reflection about your own assumptions, misunderstandings and bias. So being as clear as I can, there is no such thing as autism with a capital A, only autistic people because we are individuals. We've all heard if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. We share commonalities, which is why we would class ourselves as an autistic community, but we are not this abstract, clearly cut definable thing called autism. 
The easiest way to keep from falling into the trap of calling someone a person with autism is to remove the word autism from your vocabulary altogether. There are actually very rarely good reasons to use the word autism where autistic would not be more appropriate. Ultimately, the only people who can decide how someone or a group of someones are to be referred to, spoken about, written about, addressed, are the very people this language is about. That's us, the autistic community, not our allies, not our non-autistic parents, family or friends, not non-autistic people, not professionals, not clinicians, us. And if you are not a member of our minority, if you do not live autistic experiences, then you cannot and should not force language onto us. To do so is to remove our autonomy. And this is an act of prejudice and discrimination, and that is oppression. If, when you hear autistic, you think, imagine, envisage a disordered person, someone banging their head, rocking, some of us do this, it's not a horrible thing and it serves a purpose, then of course you want to remove autism from us by calling us a person with autism. If, on the other hand, you hear autistic and think, imagine, envisage a community, an amazing and diverse group of people with different ways to the ideological majority of experiencing and interacting with the world, including headbanging and rocking, then there is no awful disorder to remove from us. We are, in our diverse community, autistic.